Hello, I'm Keith Terry. Welcome to the Rhythm of Math DVD. This DVD is intended to accompany the Rhythm of Math book that Linda Akiyama and I co-authored that will help you teach math using rhythm. The DVD will illustrate visually many of the lessons, so you'll get an idea of what this will look like on your students. And it also will give you many suggestions of how best to present the material to them. This DVD is intended for you, the teacher of the material. However, we realize there may be times where you think it is beneficial for you students to see the DVD. So we'll leave that to your discretion. Rhythm blocks. The rhythm block technique is the vehicle that you will use to make the connection between rhythm and mathematics. Rhythm blocks are units of beats ranging from one to nine. So your one is a single clap. And I encourage you to clap palm to palm. This will do two things. One, it will really save your hands if you're clapping a lot in the class. The other thing, it will save the rest of your body. If you're clapping hard, Chances are you start hitting your body hard. So this mitigates that. Palm to palm will save your hands. So you clap, single claps. Two, we add a chest. So it's clap and a chest. Clap, chest, clap, chest. One, two, one, two. The rhythm blocks always begin with a clap. One, Three, you add the second chest. You're always alternating hands. You never have two rights or two lefts in a row. So the three is one, two, three. One, two, three. Four, we add a thigh. And it's just the natural extension of your arm. You don't have to bend over to get there. So the four would look like this. Clap, chest, chest, thigh. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, you add the other thigh. So it goes clap, chest, chest, thigh, thigh. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six, you add a brush on the hip. And you're not going to get a lot of volume from this, so don't beat yourself up trying to get there. But it's more about flow and musicality. So if we start with a clap, chest, chest, thigh, thigh, brush. Okay, remember to alternate the hands. Here we go. Ready, go. Clap, chest, chest, thigh, thigh, brush. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Begins with a clap. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven. No brush, but you have two hips. Okay, so it's clap, chest, chest, thigh, thigh, hip, hip. Here we go. Ready, go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. Alternating hands. You never have two rights or two lefts in a row. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So no matter which side you begin on, you're always alternating your hands. Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, you add a foot, a stamp. And this is kind of like the clapping. If you start stamping really hard, most likely you'll start clapping really hard, then you hit your chest hard and the whole thing escalates. So hold back, hold back, keep it light, keep it musical. We'll add the foot for eight. A ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last one. 
Good. Nine, we add the other foot. Clap, chest, chest, thigh, thigh, hip, hip, step, step. Yeah, here we go. Already go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Chest, chest, thigh, thigh, hip, hip, foot, foot. One. Try to maintain a steady pulse. So that your tempo, your time is very even. Everything has equal value. Last one, we'll end with a clap. Rhythm blocks. I encourage you to practice the rhythm blocks so you're really comfortable with them before you teach your students. It'll be much more fun for you and for them as well. Mirroring. Mirroring is a technique that can be really helpful for your students. So you may have noticed, as you are watching me and following me with the rhythm blocks, I'm leading with my left side, which means clap, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And this enables you, if you're a right-sided person, to lead with your right. So you would be going clap, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, as if you're standing looking at yourself in a mirror. Now this technique can take a little bit of uh, investment of time on your part if you are right-sided. The left side might seem a little awkward, but practice it a bit. It doesn't take much time. If you can get comfortable with this left side and standing in front of your students, leading with your left side so they can mirror you with the right, it can be very useful for them. Pour down is a simple warm-up that takes less than two minutes, and it's a great way for you and your students to practice the rhythm blocks. In four down, we play each rhythm block four times as we work our way from the clap down the body to the nine. So it sounds like this. I would go one, two, ready, go. Four ones, now four twos. Two, three, four, four threes, etc. We move our way down the body. All right, let's try it. Good luck. I'll give you a one, two, ready, go to begin, okay? One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, now threes. One, two, three, four. Fours, add the thigh. Two, three, four, five, see the other five, two, three, four, six with a brush, two. Three, four, seven, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, eight, we had a foot. Hold it back, don't rush. Steady all the way. Nine, two feet. Two. Three. Steady tempo. Four, last one. Hands with the feet. Four down.
We'd like to take you now inside a classroom where the students are working with the materials from the Rhythm of Math. In this segment, they are learning four down. Everybody ready? A beat is a unit for measuring time in music. We can experience a beat as a steady flow of sounds, one after the other, as if we're walking at a steady tempo or speed. We can hear beats, we can see beats. We can feel beats. Rhythm is a pattern that we can hear or see. So when we were listening to beats, consistent, steady, in rhythm, we mix the sounds. So you might have a foot and a clap. So the inherent difference in the sounds and also their built-in accents will give us rhythms. So we may go step, clap, clap, step, clap, clap. This gives us a rhythmic pattern now because of the different sounds and the inherent accents. Now we can exaggerate these accents by accentuating the foot first. Or the clap. Rhythmic patterns. We can take the same idea and apply it to more complex rhythms, like this. If we go step, clap, clap, step, clap, Step, clap. Let's try it again. And we can link them together by repeating it. it sounds like this. Ready, go. Step, clap, clap, step, clap, clap, step, clap. Steady tempo. Rhythmic patterns. We can group rhythm blocks together to create a rhythm. Let's take two rhythm blocks and create a pattern that is eight beats long. If we have a three rhythm block plus a five rhythm block, we can put them together like this. Three, five, and we can repeat the claps and pats create a pattern that can be repeated three five
and it can be written as 3 plus 5. In this lesson, your students will learn how to play a longer rhythmic pattern using the rhythm blocks. They will study the rhythm mathematically, then notate it as a math expression. You've divided your class into four sections. Section A, B, C, and D. Each section is playing a pattern that is eight beats long. Section A, three and five. Section B, three and five. Section C, five, three. And section D, eight. So you as the facilitator, you have a couple of jobs. One is to get them started. And I like to use a simple ready, go. It gives them two beats to, to get ready and come in on the next beat. So I would use that for starting with section A. And I would go, ready, go, three, Five. And then I come in with them. I play their part. Okay? So I play section A, 3 5. On the last beat, it's the eighth beat of that pattern, I give a pickup with my body, body language, letting the next group, section B, know that their turn is coming. So it gives them one beat, the eighth beat of the preceding group, to prepare, and they come in on the next beat. Okay? Section B, three and five, I play that with them. When I get to the last beat, the eighth beat, again, I give this body language to section C so that they can come in with five and three. At the end of that, same thing for section D, it's coming in with the eight. This helps to facilitate a steady flow of tempo. So you've got consistent time going through the sequencing of the A, B, C, and D groups. So I'll demonstrate this. So with section A, I'll give them a ready go like this. Ready, go. Three, five, three, there's section B. Five, here comes C. Five, three, D, the eight. Always giving them that anticipation so they have a little time to prepare. Now, if I wanted to repeat this, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, in the last group, obviously I would have to cue back to the group A. So the eight here, one, two, three, five, and that would link you back to the A group. So let's see what this looks like in the classroom. I'm ready, go. Now let's see if we can go three times through, okay? So after your eight, we'll come back right back in over here, okay? So listening to each other. I'm ready, go. The rhythm we just heard was created by using the commutative and identity properties of addition. So consult the teacher's guide for more details about teaching these properties using the rhythm blocks. The commutative property states that changing the order of two numbers being added does not change the sum. So we could have a rhythm block of three and five will equal five and three. Your students can confirm this by counting each beat like this. If I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
We use hand signs to keep track of how many times a rhythm block is played. This way your students can hear, see, and feel multiplication as groups of equal size. These are the hand signs, one through nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five, full hand, six, your thumb, seven, eight, nine. Now I can use these hand signs to keep track if I'm making groupings of rhythm blocks. If I'm working in the rhythm block of three, flat, chest, chest. So I could count four of these three rhythm blocks like this. One. Now notice I'm using the, 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 back, the back of my hand here, or the base of my hand, instead of a full clap. So it's one. You don't get the same sound, but you still get the, the attack, the feel of that solid contact with your other hand. One. Same with the chest. Not a full hand on the chest now. I'm maintaining that one. So it goes one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. One last time. One, two, three, four. Hand signs. These three algorithms reinforce the different meanings of multiplication while using the rhythm blocks, solving the problem five times three. First, counting the ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Five times three is 15. While repeating the three rhythm block five times, skip count. Three, six, by counting the last number of each three rhythm block. Looks like this. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. Counting in multiples of three. The third way is thinking multiple units. Ask your students to think of the three rhythm blocks as units of three beats. Then use the hand signs to count how many threes they play. How many beats did we play? Five times three equals 15. Now, obviously, this emphasizes the power of memorizing multiplication facts. It's much faster to memorize those facts than to count these one by one. We're surrounded by rhythm and thus mathematical patterning. It's everywhere, in nature, in our environment, in architecture and design. Take a look at these few examples that we found in a local school. We can look at this bookshelf as an array. We can look at them as three columns. We can look at them as seven rows. So here, if we play this column as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, second one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we can look at the rows. One, two, three, two, two, Three, two, three, four, two, three, five, two, three, six, two, three, seven, two, three rows. We're looking at equal groups. We have three groups of four chairs. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, twelve chairs. We have two unequal groups of books. We have one group of three, one, two, three. We have another group of four, 
one, two, three, four. We'll use addition to find out how many books all total we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven books. We can use our voices to accentuate rhythmic patterns in the environment around us. If we look at these first four cubbies here, I could think of this as short and long, high and low. Short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. Or I could read it across as short, 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 long, 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 long. This hallway has many rhythmic and mathematical possibilities. If I look at the lights on the ceiling, each light has three panels. And there are three lights. So I might play them as one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. Now, if I take a look at the windows on the wall, there are a total of 12. If I think of them as twos, I have one, two, three, two, four, two, five, two, six, two. If I think of them as sixes with two rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I put them together, it sounds like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, one. Two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six. We can approach this one more way, and that's using melody along with the rhythm. So we might think of the lights on the ceiling as Da, 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 da. We have three lights, each with three panels. Da, 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 da. The twos. Ba, da, 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 da. The sixes. Da, 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 da
and uh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear the rhythm that they Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like black, gun, da, 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 together, da, 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 da. The only time we clap it together is at the beginning of that rhythm. This exercise helps to build your skill in using the hand signs. And I'm simply doing the four down, but this time using the signs to keep track of how many I'm playing. Four each, like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four down using the hand signs. In this lesson, the students use rhythm blocks and hand signs to verify the least common multiple of three and four. Let's take a look at the students. Already ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, One two, three, four. Mm -hmm. One, One, and keep going. Two, Three, four. One. Let's bring in the two, fours. Three, four. Ready, go. One, two, two, three, 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 four. One, two, two, three, three, four. One, two, two, two three, three, four. One, two, two, two three, three, four. One, two, two, two. two and up. As you can see, the students were counting in multiples of threes and fours. Three, six, nine, twelve. Four times three equals twelve. Four, eight, twelve. Three times four equals twelve. We've divided the students into two sections, with one section playing the three rhythm block, while the other section plays the two rhythm block. It takes two of the three rhythm blocks to equal three of the two rhythm blocks. Ready, go. Notice how I bring in the second group. I'll say ready, go on the last two beats of the first group. Bring in the twos. Ready, go. I'm going to ask you to do this with me, just the two of us. So you're going to do the threes, okay? And I'm going to do the twos. Well, let's start out, I'll start out with you with the threes, okay? And then I'll switch over. Ready? Ready, go. One, two. One, two. One, two. I'm going to switch parts. I'm going to the twos. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, Beautiful. One, two, three. 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 One, two,
three, and well done. In this lesson, students explore the relationship of division and multiplication using a rhythmic phrase based on 12 beat groupings. Now for this, we need a new rhythm block, a 12. It looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. After the feet at the end, we add belly, belly, snap. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So for this, we have six groups, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Group one, group A, 12 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Group B, six, two rhythm blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Group C, two, six rhythm blocks. One, two. Group D, three, four rhythm blocks. One, two, three. Group E, four, three rhythm blocks. One, two, three, four. And group F, one, 12 rhythm block. Let's go to the classroom. These are our different groupings of 12 beats. We can combine them in a variety of ways to compose a rhythm. Let's take a look at how we combine them here in this configuration. There are many ways to explore the meanings of fractions using rhythm blocks. In this lesson, we'll look at fractions as part of a rhythmic unit. In this case, the entire rhythmic unit has eight beats. There are four sections. Section A, one times eight rhythm block. Section B, two times the four rhythm block. Section C, four times the two rhythm block. And section D, eight times the one rhythm block. So let's take a look at the students doing this. Ready, go. Now a little faster and without me. Ready, go. In this lesson, students learn a bass rhythm and grouping variation based on the associative property of addition. The first line of the bass rhythm begins with a three rhythm block followed by another three and a two. Put them together, they sound like this. Now the parentheses show us that the three plus three becomes a six. Plus two. Put that together, it sounds like this. Six plus two equals eight. 
I put them all together and it sounds like this. Bass rhythms. The first group is going to do this. Uh, it's an equation on the left side here. So what we're going to do is three, three, two. So if I go ready, go three, three, two. Okay. Now we can all learn. This, okay. Three, three, two. Here we go. Yeah. Ready, go three. Now let's go six and two. A ready, go. Okay, six and two. A ready, go. Beautiful. And an eight. A ready, go. Let's try it again. A ready, go. Nice. A ready, go. Three. The first line of the grouping plus variation begins with a three rhythm block, followed by a three and a two. Put together, it sounds like this. Now, the parenthesis showed us that this becomes three plus five. It sounds like this. Or eight. So the complete grouping plus variation sounds like this. Now let's watch the students as they demonstrate both the bass rhythm and the grouping plus variation. Ready, go. I strongly urge you to refer to the teacher's guide to learn more details about how to teach these last two rhythms and how they relate to the associative property of addition. Hey you, hey what? This is a short rhythmic phrase that your students can use to perform for others. Let's see how the students play this both sequentially and simultaneously. I give you a ready go and we'll alternate five and seven. Okay. A ready go. Five, seven, and a five. We just repeat. Seven, and a five, seven. One more time. And a five, seven, and a five. So remember the five ends with two legs here. And the seven ends with two dollars. Yeah, so you don't even have to think so much. Yeah? Yeah. Okay? On the first clap, we're going to say, hey. We're going to go, hey. On the second clap, we're going to say, you. So it's going to go, hey. You. Hey. You. Hey. You. Ready, go. We're gonna go seven five. Okay? Seven ends with two bottoms. Five ends with two legs. Okay? So ready go. Hey, what? What? And a. Uh, hey. 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 
Good, good, good. Let me try this. This is going to go five, seven, seven, five. It's going to go, hey, you, hey, what? And then it starts over again. Hey, you, hey, what? Hey. Okay. Five, seven, seven, five. Okay, and then that repeats. Five, seven. Hey, five, you, seven, hey, what? Here we go. Five, seven, Ready? Five, seven, seven. Ready, go. Hey, you. And a, uh, hey, you. what? And a, uh, hey, you. And a, uh, hey, what? And a, uh, hey, you. Countdown is an exciting way for your students to demonstrate what they've learned in the rhythm of math classes. This composition starts with an introduction and ends with a coda, and they're the same part. Before we begin, I have to say one thing. If you notice section 11, the second line of the introduction and the coda, at the very end there's a one in a bracket. It's a silent one, a silent beat. So if I play that, section 11's part, it goes like this. Three, 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 five, one. The silent beat at the end. So let's divide your class into 11 groups, maybe a semicircle or a straight line. And you start with, uh, if you have them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. you'll have the introduction and the uh, coda on your far right. And then the body of the work, the main section of the composition, will start to your left and work its way back to the coda group. All right, so I'll just play through this so you can hear how the composition works. And uh, we'll use that ready, go to start it. And we'll take it at a nice, uh, relaxed tempo like this. Ready, go. Section one, section two, section three, section four, section five, section six, seven, section eight. Section nine, coda. Eleven. Countdown is a challenging exercise, but it can be very fun if your students are up for the challenge. An option to the full exercise is to play only sections one through five. Even this short excerpt is rich with rhythmic and mathematical possibilities. In and Out is a rhythmic game. It helps to build rhythmic skill, and it's just plain fun. Let's watch the students. Player A is on the right. He's clapping the main beat. Musically, we can call these the downbeats. 
Player B on the left is clapping the in-between beats. We can think of these as the upbeats. Player A claps horizontally, while player B claps vertically. Based on the claps of player A, the tempo speeds up slightly after each 8-beat cycle, faster and faster until the two players can no longer maintain their parts. One, two, three, four. You can also play the same game with groups of students. Ready, go, and a da, 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 and a da, beep, 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 beep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a da, beep, 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 My collaborator, Linda Akiyama, and I are thrilled to bring this material to you and honored that you would be taking it onto your classroom. We've seen amazing results with students. Students become engaged, energized, creatively involved. And we're excited that they're not only gaining an appreciation for rhythmic music, but a deeper understanding of mathematics.